I'm Tandy Gutierrez and welcome to another session of Chat on the Mat. So pretty fun, we've been getting subscribers and members of Matt and Kitchen literally from all over and sitting down and asking a couple questions and talking about their experience on the mat, which is really fun for me. <laughs> um, so today we have two of my ambassadors. Um, we're sitting in Alfred, New York because we just finished up a mat and kitchen live event. And so the events are two hour workshops that ambassadors bring me in to their city. And I teach two hours to all the new members in this area that want to come and participate. So it's incredible one-on-one -on -one time. It's a workout, it's food education, and again, just getting them to know how and why I teach and seeing if it's gonna be a fit for them. So super big thank you to you two for bringing me here. And now we're gonna talk a little bit. So who are they, why are they ambassadors, why do they get on the mat, and maybe you hear a little bit of yourself in their stories and see something that can really work for you in your lives. So, Eliza, would um, you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. I'm Eliza Ordway. I am 37 years old. I am the mother of two teenage preteen boy and a girl. Um, I work full time outside of the home and I also am a volunteer for two different organizations for my kids. So I'm pretty busy. And um, what are those organizations? Um, the Little League and the Sports Boosters Club yeah. that um, runs through our school or through our town. So yeah. So I'm the treasurer for one and the president of the other. So i um, pretty busy and I have two very active kids who are involved in sports and drama and all that good stuff. So there's a lot of running and um, typical kind of mom stuff that happens. So it makes days busy. Yeah. And, and you work full time. I do. Okay. Yep. So yeah, on top of everything mm -hmm. else. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. And Megan, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Megan Stewart. I'm going to be 38 on Tuesday. Happy birthday! <laughs> yes. um, I have two kids, an 11-year-old boy and a 6-year-old girl. Um, I'm a preschool teacher. They both play sports. My husband works out of town a lot. Um, so, you know, just a busy mom. Like, like super anybody. busy. Like, <laughs> super busy. You're out of town a lot of weekends yes. for wrestling tournaments yes. and, like, I you got a lot. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, Eliza, Ills. it's your turn. Um, how did you find out about Matt and Kitchen? Why did you sign up? How did you come to okay. be a part of things? So, I like to say Megan made me do it. Um, <laughs> she turned me on to Matt, Matt and Kitchen back when I was pimp your Matt. Um, I got a free code from her for a two-week trial, and I honestly never even looked at it, never did anything. I had all the excuses, everything. Um, that came up, you know. And then last March, April, I switched jobs. Um, things were just kind of spiraling in a bad direction for me. And I believe you had a challenge happening at the time. And yep. Megan was like, you really, really should try this. So I signed in, signed up, jumped in with both feet, did the reset, kind of rocked it right out. And it's been pretty smooth sailing since. I've had a little, you know, life kind of stuff, but um, it's, it's good and it's great and it's, it's part of what I do every day. Cool. So you and, because Megan made you do it. Megan made me do it. <laughs> okay. Peer pressure so, is best. You know, right? Even at 37, 38. Totally. You know? Your besties, watch out. That's <laughs> where things are going to happen. Um, so Megan, and I don't know if you said it before or not, so I'm going to say it again. Like you teach preschool part-time. Mm -hmm and you've got two kids, you guys are traveling a lot for sports and super involved. Um, okay, so how did, so for those of you who don't know, Matt and Kitchen used to be Pimp Your Matt. Um, mm -hmm. We transitioned the name and the you know brand of it in August because the food component has become such an equal weighted territory. And as a trainer, like I'm big on both. Like you really need both for full circle wellness. Um, a lot of people can come to the site and just do the workouts, totally fine, many people do. Some people come just for the food, and again, totally fine. But Megan has been around since it was Pimp Your Mat, and so how did you find it? And then, you know, why did you stay? I, um, it just came up on my Facebook news feed and sounded cool as Pimp Your Mat, so I kind of lurked. Um, this was probably for three or four months, I just lurked and you would offer free codes and I would say, oh, I'm not gonna do it. Then um, 
you offered one for your birthday where I would get essential oils and a two week free trial, which was longer. So I committed, if I can do it for two weeks, then it's something I can pay for and justify having in my budget. So I did it every day for the two weeks. I got a folder with mommy workouts that were, you know, more like core centric and kind of issues that people who've had babies might have. And at the end of the two weeks, Tandy emailed me to make sure that I knew I needed to switch to a paid subscription if I wanted to keep my workouts and I couldn't sign up fast enough. <laughs> like, I'm not losing all of those workouts. They're so good. And then, you know, I just kind of didn't see any change in myself, but I had committed, like, if people can do P90X and change their body in 90 days, I'll do Pilates for that 90 days. I took a before picture. I did it. I didn't lose any weight. And I took an after picture, and the transformation was amazing. Like, the posture, the muscle tone, the definition, the, it was, I couldn't even believe that with losing no weight at all that that had happened, and I knew that that was that was a big deal. That was something like, I get up every morning and do it. It's, it's easily fits into my life. So it's, I mean, it's a no brainer for me to stick with it. <laughs> well, maybe it was one of those people too that like did put herself on this like, well, okay, most things happen for 30, 60, 90 days. I'm going to do 90 days of it on my own. And I didn't know. And then she had sent me her photos and I was like, this is like perfect, you know, because we've been running challenges and sessions and showing that your weight may never change. Um, you know, it's kind of sneaky. You're not super sweaty, but it acts like shrink wrap and your whole body shifts and transitions. And she was like the perfect person to just really highlight and show like unbelievable. Like I didn't think anything had really changed. I just said I'd do it. So I did it. And then it all transitioned. So super fun. Um, so, you know, how, Eliza, so you got pulled into it because Megan had done it, so she'd found it on Facebook and then just kind of went, I'll try, yeah, okay, this works for me. And then she wrangles you into it. Mm -hmm. And then, and I say wrangle because that's how things happen. Yeah, yeah. Then why did you, why have you stayed? Because I learned through um, the reset that I did last year, things that don't work for my body and it totally changed my perspective on food. I used to be a calorie counter, I used to be a um, fat watcher, a, all those different kind of things and where I realized through the reset that good real food, it doesn't matter the calorie count, you're going to eat until you're full, you eat good fresh ingredients and your body runs so much better and <laughs> the weight falls off if you have it to lose um, and things like you said, things change, you, you kind of shrink and I notice still, like when I don't eat the way I should, I'm grumpy, I'm grouchy, things don't feel right. There are physical signs, but it's um, external, but there's a lot of internal stuff that happens that, you know, people don't see, but you definitely feel. And it's physical, it's mental, it's all that stuff. And it's amazing to know that it's all really because of what you're putting in your body. And that's so. a big shift for you. Mm -hmm. Huge. In part. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we we'll kind of talk about both because you all came into it, you know, kind of randomly as everybody kind of, oh, sure, I'll try, great, read something new. And then you both stayed. And it's, I mean, would you, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, like, do you, was it really drastically different than the way you were looking at things before, fitness and wellness wise? Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just, I was always like, if you're not going to run five miles a day, what's the point of doing anything? Like, there's nothing's going to be better for you than running. And I, I emailed Tandy within the first couple of weeks saying, are you sure all you do is your 30 minute workouts? You don't run, <laughs> I totally you're not that, lifting, yeah. you're not like sweating your butt off every day, killing your body, like this really works. I was, you know, not really skeptical, but just like I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Like I was waiting for the catch, like, yeah. you know, that comes with everything. Like, oh, but it's this hard work or whatever. I was just waiting for you to say, well, and now you need to do if this. If you do that and you have to do and this. Oh, and surprise, <laughs> there's also this that you yeah. didn't see coming yeah. now that I've reeled you it. Like it wasn't, it was nothing like that. Like I had all the excuses that I tried to run by her in the beginning and she was like, come and try it if you want to or don't. Like it'll help you. I'll still be here. Or you won't do it. Like I'm doing my thing and I, you know. Okay, I guess I'll try it. Right. So, and it, I mean, two, two years, six times a week, and I, I love it. I start my day. I can't, I 
can't start it without my workout. I just like, I mean, I like to tell, and again, to have you all, because you came in kind of randomly mm -hmm. and then have stayed mm -hmm. and have been, you know, at the peak of like, to, like peak of like, I, you know, am totally very consistent and like eating exactly what I should have done the food reset for those of you who don't know it's my 41 day like food mapping and it's a it, take it or leave it if you're interested in it it's on the site for you if you're not I don't push it it's a very personal thing but it allows you to crack your own food code to figure out like what foods work for you and not push you into doing somebody else's certain diet or certain thing or doing exactly what I do because bodies are different so you guys have both done the reset and both been at places where you're like rocking and rolling feeling real sassy and also had real lives that take you away from that, you know, seemingly peak of perfection. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, <laughs> and in the mix of all of that, mm -hmm. you guys decide to be ambassadors. And I say decide, I mean, we talk through it together, but you said, I want to do this. Right. And being an ambassador means that you love it, that you want to share it with your community. They don't get, they don't get paid for it. Like, we get shirts. You get shirts, you get some presents. Um, and you get presents, I show up for yes. you. Um, but they decided they want to share it. So if you're an ambassador for, for me, you get you know X amount of people in your community sign up new to the site, and then I fly in and I teach a two hour workshop, and then I spend about 72 hours with the ambassadors um, and just talking through whatever they need or whatever they need you know support with in their wellness life. So you guys have been, uh, it's real, right? Mm -hmm. Like up and down, and then hosted an event. like. So why, you know, with that real process, do you stick with it? And why did you want to be an ambassador? Well, I think I decided to do the ambassadorship like two, three months in. Like I was still yeah. very new and like definitely very mm -hmm. gung ho. Um, honestly, I told you this, the best thing for me was this because a month ago I was not in a good place. Like I was still struggling with some things and if I didn't have this event, like I said, it may not have carried me, like I've definitely gotten back on track and I've gotten myself, my mental state is much better. Um, but I wanted to meet you. Like I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to talk to someone. The truth who, comes out, the yeah. camera comes on. Well, I wanted to meet the person who, A, changed Megan's life so much that she had to drag me in, <laughs> kicking and screaming, no. Um, but, and then in the same turn, like, I mean, it made a huge impact on me. Like, I, I just, yeah, it's kind of, like I said, the things I know about food and my body um, that I didn't know a year ago is amazing. Like, I don't have to kill myself at the gym. And I think, yeah. Clearly, you know, you just start to tell the stories and you realize this is why I ask you guys to tell your stories. Um, because fitness and wellness is so much more than your workout and getting on the mat. And it's so much more than the scale and it's so much more than how you look. <laughs> and I teach it um, as a teacher. I think we, those teachers out there, you teach what you have learned or what you need to learn. And so then you want to share it because you wished you'd had some guidance mm -hmm. and support in that process. And I think as a culture, and I never know what topics are really gonna come up. Um, you know, as a culture for women, we're headed towards looking a certain way. And we're not communicated with as to what it means to feel a certain way. And there's been so much guilt and deprivation connected to a body look without ever asking how do you feel right right like how do you connect mm -hmm. like do you like it is it yeah. fun do you enjoy it do you feel better when you're done like the running thing right. you know me there's nothing wrong with running like movement is great and if you love it and it brings joy to your life and you put your shoes on and you feel empowered and your body is respond no me <laughs> In a healthy way, then go run. Right. But I think so. We always pick on running because it just comes up a lot. You know, I ran and I hated it. <laughs> I hate it for years mm -hmm. and thought, well, this is the only way to stay fit and to prove that I'm a fit and healthy person is that I must run. And you go, I didn't like it. 
I did not like it. If, is there somebody chasing me? Then okay. Um, is there, you know, a pretty purse at the end? I might start sprinting. But long distances, you know, and what it can do to your body in the long run, it's not a fit for everybody. But we're being sold that it should be, and that's not the truth. So it's very powerful because you get on the mat and you start to really get internally connected to your body and aware. Mm -hmm. And if I can lead this a little bit, I think the most interesting part, me as an observer, as a teacher, is that the self-responsibility and accountability start to be really honored. For sure. Like I'm not ready, mm -hmm. or I am ready, or I'm choosing not to do this even though I know what to do. Like these are all really wonderful right. things. Mm -hmm. So, Megan, for you, like, why did you want to step into ambassador shoes? Because, again, you do, you're not getting paid. Like, I, you know, you get yeah. t-shirts. <laughs> Clearly, clothing is a motivator for me. <laughs> I did the reset and a fall session with Tandy, Tandy where she guided me with workouts and food for eight weeks. And I really jumped right in and did it because I got a free tank top at the end. Yeah, so close. <laughs> and it, okay. it, it, was, it was awesome. I, you know, I mean, I felt, I felt great, and then, but then I had an end date, so I stopped, but I, um, I made her be an ambassador. I, I didn't want to be yeah. an ambassador. I mean, I wanted to be Tell an ambassador truth, because, you know, if you ask my friends and family, like, I really am constantly saying, well, Tandy says, well, Tandy told me to do this. <laughs> Tandy said it should be like this. Well, if you go on Tandy's website, <laughs> like, I constantly, like, everybody, you know, I'm the third person. Like, who, who is this Tandy? Who is this Tandy person? And That's I just thought. Anymore. I have so many people who are just struggling with weight or health or finding time as a busy mom to work out yeah. or, you know, just all of these issues or, you know, just being a mom, like teaching your kids, you know, I mean, if I knew, if I had someone guiding me at age six, like my daughter is, you know, I feel like I wouldn't have so many food issues now, like just with emotional eating and with craving sugar and things like that, you know, I just... It would have started so much earlier and I would have less hard work to do now. So I just thought if I, you know, when Liza was all gung-ho and said that we could do this, we could get these people, I thought, you know, Tandy's going to be able to explain it so much better to my friends and family yeah. than I can. And when they see her and when they have her answer questions, you know, it's just, it's going to be real for them. And if, you know, if I can stick with it and love it and introduce my best friend to it so she sticks with it and loves it like how many more people could we help you know my my friends and family who you know I just I want them to feel the same way about it that I do and I thought you would be better I hope I was today um yeah it's just a fascinating thing because today you know whenever we have a chat on that the few that we're kind of building, it's always a different perspective because there are so many people on Matt and Kitchen from all over the world and very different lives and very different people. And so they go, well, I don't know if it's for me or not because I don't fit into X category. I'm like, nobody on the site fits into an X category. Like, there's a crazy array of ages from, you know, around 28 from the ones that I know, you know, into their late 60s. 12. Mm -hmm. 12, and there are a lot of kiddos that do it with their parents, you know, and then there's men on the mat, and So today we've got like three mommies, all basically the same age, um, and all busy working moms, you know, like whether it's a part-time or a full-time position or whoever knows how many hours, I don't really <laughs> actually, where I don't know. It's a, hours the today. mompreneur Number, overworker. Yeah. Um, but, you know, people go, is that really all you do? I'm like, I do not have time to do anything else. Yeah. This is why we created, because of 30-minute workouts, mm -hmm. it's, you know, you press play wherever you've got a Wi-Fi connection, and you really typically only need the space of your mat. So, you know, I'm running to and from stuff also. Um, we're not doing a lot of the kid shuttling yet, because their ages haven't mm -hmm. kind of kicked in for that for us yet. But we're managing, you know, meetings and shooting and editing and, um, interviews and ah, events and travel like I do not have time to go drive to a studio or a gym anymore like sometimes I do but to keep a workout consistent is not in the cards right now to go someplace else for me um, and you get in other cities like I mean like LA or New York you have trainers who are capable of coming to you but then you've got to figure out the price point and the cost of that you guys Tell me about where you live and where we are. You want to go first? Yeah, we are in rural western New York. 
Um, there are no yoga studios, per se. Um, there's a couple places that offer classes periodically throughout the week, but they're um, like lunch times or you know, Sunday mornings, it, and it's really hard to get things to fit into your schedule. Um, there's YMCAs that are both um, 15 to 20 minutes from our from where I live, um, and there's gyms at the colleges that are here. But then you have to work out with college students, and there's certain times you can and you can't go, mm -hmm. and um, there's just a lot of sort of uncomfortability that comes with that. Um, and like I said, there's a lack of opportunities or resources. Yeah. Um, like I said, there's not a yoga studio that's open till eight o'clock at night all day or I mean whatever. So it's hard to find that. So this is a perfect fit, especially in our area where, you know, you don't have to do it at home. You can I mean I've done it at lunch in an office on yeah. you know. Right. Um yeah. so it's it's transportable, it's movable. I mean, I know Megan does them in hotel rooms while she's traveling and I've done it camping. Like mm -hmm. it's totally like it's it's portable. It's your portable studio. Absolutely. Well, you get to take your trainer with you mm -hmm. everywhere and not Absolutely. miss a session. And I think that it, it speaks in different ways to different places. So in LA, when you're driving a ton and you can go places, but you miss it because you're stuck in traffic and you've already gone home, like forget it. It's your extra resource. Right. Um, for you know, I'm in Austin, Texas now, and like. Yeah, so I can go drive to a studio sometimes, every once in a while. I go, yeah, I'm going to go do that today. It's three hours out of my day round trip. You know, if it's an hour and a half yoga class and the 30 minutes to get there and park and the 30 minutes to come home, I'm like, what did I, that was, I can't, I can't do that. Like, I freak out, you know, because mm -hmm. there's other things to do and kids waiting on you. Right. Um, so, you know, and then you've got a space here where there aren't that many resources. I mean, there are, but there's not, not like there are other places. So, again, yeah. it, it sort of levels the playing field for a busy life and when you're looking for fitness and wellness. Um, Megan, if you, like what is, you don't have to pigeonhole to one, but if there's one major shift in philosophy or understanding in fitness and wellness that Matt and Kitchen has taught you, what is that, like the biggest thing? I have like two that are equal, um, like, one is that 30 minutes on the mat being kind to your body is enough. Um, you know, like I have said previously, like I thought it would cardio was where it was at. I was a runner in high school and college. That's, I just, that's what you do when you want to get in shape. And number two is that food really does matter. Number one, I have like rock solid. I work out every morning. I don't miss a day. <laughs> in two <laughs> years. Two, yeah, in two years. Yeah, I've done every workout that Tandy has ever posted <laughs> on Mountain Kitchen. <laughs> I need a t-shirt for that. I'm proud of that. <laughs> um, and the food part, I, I just am not there yet. And I'm, I don't know, it makes me sad to not be there, but it's, you know, I have the tools and I know what are the good things and I know that you know, just because I feel like this because of what I eat right now, that's not how, I mean, you gave me the roadmap, the 41 day roadmap of how to get back. So it's, you know, it, it doesn't feel like I had a cheat day, I'm done. So now I'll just have a cheat month, which leads into a cheat year, which leads into <laughs> gaining a hundred pounds. You know I mean? It's just, it's not like that anymore. It's like, you know, okay, I, I ate some bad food right now. So have a smoothie in the morning. I Start ate again. some bad food right now. Eat some, you know, salad and good protein for dinner. Like it's not, it's never like the end of it. Like I screwed up and I'm done. And so that's you know, that's always how it's been for me with food and with working out. Like mm -hmm. I missed a day, I'm done. I ate a bad food. Yeah, I'm but done. in two years you've worked out every day. Like that's I mean that's a that's a huge shift in how you're living your life. Absolutely. I, the my really my longest streak, except for when I was on sports teams in high school and college, was three days. Like three, three. I mean, days. come on. Like yeah. again, like so. We always talk about. Or I always talk about celebrating your wins. That like everybody's life is different. Everybody's emotional place is different. And that the goal of getting fit and healthy is that you improve the quality of your life. And so that looks different to each person. But how different is that? So it's like, you know, food is a whole nother topic. It's very emotional. Um, you did the reset. You learned what doesn't work for your body. You don't always honor that, and you eat those things anyway, and that is okay. And now you're aware of how that makes you feel, not just how you look. Right. And you go, it's on the table now. I'm aware, and I will get there in when I'm ready, and that's fine. But in the meantime, like, oh my gosh, show up from the rooftops that you've done your workouts every day for the last two years. You're totally getting a different shirt for that. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't really need a shirt for everything. <laughs> you might. It might be your thing. We're going to figure it that out now. Your motivator. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so again, as we kind of go back and forth, I go, yeah, don't downplay the things you haven't done. Like, embrace the things that you have done, because that's huge. That's huge. That's big. Um, so, Eliza, for you, like, what do you feel like, I mean, you, you kind of already touched on it, but if you can, you know, really get in there with it, like, what is the biggest thing that has changed in your thought process or how you understand or how you think about your fitness and wellness from Matt and Kitchen? Right. So Megan and I have been saying all along, we're like, you put us together, we're like the perfect Matt and Kitchen person because she does all the exercises and I can rock out the food. Like, I can batch cook like nobody's business. I, I know what food I should be eating, and I really do eat it most of the time. I mean, you can't do it all the time. Well, you can, but I can't. Um, <laughs> not yet. You're, yeah, that's, that's, not you're not doing yet. it right now. But it's fine. But the food is, for me, was a huge component. Um, I struggle more with the, the scheduling of my workouts, which is, is a personal struggle. It's not a, you know, oh, it's too hard, they're too, too, they're too long. It's more of a... I don't want to get out of bed in the morning, and if I don't do it at 6 o'clock, my day kind of train wrecks me, and then, like, oh, it's 9 o'clock, and I'm exhausted, and I can't do it. So it's retraining my body and my mind and myself to get up in the morning and get on the mat, because I do feel so much better when I do it, yeah. and um, I just, I need to identify the fact that, like I said, my, my life with my family and all that is... A little unpredictable once I get home from work which I think is pretty typical with most yeah. most families so um, I have to say all right I'm doing this before we leave the house or before I leave the house to go to work in the morning it has to be done and I really think that once I get that in my brain yeah. you know um, the food component is really there like it is I know what I'm supposed to be doing and I do it I mean I definitely make much better food choices than I used to I don't eat processed food like I mean you know, I try not to. It's very hard sometimes when it's not in your control. But I also make better choices than, what than you I did. did. Before. Yeah. And um, I'm going to share, which I hope is okay to share. <laughs> I hope it's okay to share. Um, that we do talk about, like, you know, throwing out your scales. It's not about the number. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's good to talk about a number as a reference point because mm -hmm. we know that as our marker typically. Mm -hmm. And I want people to know how they feel, how their clothes fit. And, but again, it's a marker. So you have been in a place where you, you've done the food reset, mm -hmm. really identified what didn't work, lost 30 pounds, right. and then had life happen, and making better choices but weren't right. really beholden to it, mm -hmm. but are still 10 pounds down from where you started. Right. Yep. So this idea of like, mm -hmm. it's a better, and knowing what and works, but you've got to implement it mm -hmm. and be, or choose the better mm -hmm. and go, it's okay. And if I look at it like, I know I can pinpoint the things that I've done since really going off the reset, the stricter reset diet the last, you know, last time. So now it's like, all right, so not so much rice, not so much. There's little things that yeah. I know that I was doing that just need to be tweaked. And I'm going to reset again, hopefully next week, I start. Um, because my body, there are, there are some issues like my feet and I have, you know, that um, I know are from food. So I need to clean, like I need to start with a clean slate again. Like start over and re-identify those things. And just say, okay, now my body, because it, when it's good, it's good. And like I feel great and my body is functioning well and I look good. And you know, it's like, and it isn't all about the scale at all. And it's not about really, I shouldn't say, it's not about how you look, it's how you feel. Yeah. And when you feel good, you feel like you look good. Yeah, like, yeah. So yeah exactly. So it's, it's this whole like, and when you feel like you look good, and when, you f when you're just feeling good about yourself, you're just a happier person. Yeah. Like, it all goes hand in hand, right? And then you show up better for your kids, and there's more mm -hmm. patience, and then you're more capable and more willing to take on other things. Um, so were you all either one really aware? I mean, like, again, we're aware of weight as a culture of, like, I'm eating junk food, so I'm, mm -hmm. there's weight, right? Okay, so we're aware of that. That's not... That's not a negotiable. That's not something we're like, oh, that was brand new to me. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that it was totally brand new to you all, that it really made a huge impact on how you felt and how, like, your mood and how you yeah. showed up for people? Like, I, that was not a connector before. Mm -hmm. I never, I mean, I never really thought about, like, I mean, I thought about, actually, no. I No, I never, like, I never thought 
that like eating that pizza pocket was going to make me feel like crap the next day or that night and I didn't think about the fact that like too much sugar whatever kind it is is gonna make me cranky and like yeah, yeah. I'm not a nice person when I'm <laughs> I mean, and it's funny because, you know, you see those things that say, ooh, watch out, I'm on a diet, I'm, I'm hungry, I'm blah, 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 but I'm angry or whatever. And it's like, that is so not true because it's not a diet. Yeah. Yeah. It is just a changing in your eating plan and your, your eating habits. And when you are eating well, you're not angry, you're not yeah. cranky, yeah. you're not moody, and you're not, you're not, you feel good, you're happy. So it's like, yeah. that whole thing, if you're eating right, isn't true. You know, and you're not hungry. Right. So, yeah. You know, no one likes to be hungry. No. I'm all about eat. But eat, <laughs> eat, but eat real, right? Eat a lot if you're hungry, but make it real. Was that something that you were aware of or had ever thought about or really connected with prior? Not. Not really. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, like, I have an issue with sugar, and I mostly just mm -hmm. think or thought that it makes me feel good. Yeah. I, you know, and I feel good. But then I don't. <laughs> like, I then, you know, and it's like right now it's a lot because I, like, I know I shouldn't eat that. Well, and now it's a brain game because yeah. you're aware. Yeah. So so like, guilty. I mean, it's, I didn't, I didn't think about it like, you know, I had peanut butter cups for lunch and now I'm snapping at my kids after school. I never, like, oh, it's because I had peanut butter cups for lunch. I never, I never Ooh, thought kidding. that. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's a new, it's a new thing to think when I did do the reset. You know, I had energy. I was like, you know, let's play. Let's do this. Let's do these crafts. Mm. Like, I had patience. I, like, everybody noticed. Like, my family right. for sure noticed that, you know, yeah. when you're eating better food, it's, you're more fun. You're more happy. You're nicer. You're more present. I know, because I get a lot, because I have, you know, I have IBS and celiac and have a thyroid removal and went very strict to figure out my health and to heal. But even to this day, I, I sort of get like, well, don't you ever miss this? And don't you like, and I go, N no, I, I mean, it's been four years now, but I don't because I don't miss the, I remember feeling really like sugar hung over the next day and not realizing that was a thing yeah. or just feeling so crabby, cranky mm -hmm. that you're just snapping and to this, to this day, if there, I have an alcoholic beverage that's not in, like I know that really fits with my system, I am crabby <laughs> the next day, like snitty, snapping at people and I go, that is not worth it. Mm -hmm. It's so not worth it. I'm a man, my kids agree that that is not worth it. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for finding me. And thank you for wrangling her into it. Um, it is a, it's an honor for you guys to be my ambassadors. And I really appreciate it. And thank you for introducing me to your awesome, wonderful city and community. Um, mm -hmm. It's been super fun. So thank you for getting on the mat with me. Thank you for chatting on the mat with me. And we will see you all next time with um, two other members and subscribers and sharing their lives and their experience with you.